Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different because we're going to be taking a look at some of the more obscure tech related items that I have. And a lot of these are going to be Windows XP related. You can see we've got this little corner over here with some Windows XP related stuff. And I've also got some other things off camera right now that we're gonna get into in a moment. But these are some things I was really just going through some of my stuff the other day and I came across you know, some of the more obscure items that I have that maybe a lot of you guys haven't seen. And I thought it'd be really cool to do a dedicated video on all of this stuff. Now, I have made videos on probably most of the stuff that's on screen right now. I've done videos on all of these devices down here. I've done videos on most of these items over here. This Windows XP lamp is the only thing that's never been shown or well, it's been on the channel before. I've just not really explained how I got it and, and what it actually is. So some of these items were available to the general public. You could go out and purchase these. That's the case with these four items right here. Uh, but they might just not have been around very long. That's certainly the case with this last item here. Uh, some of these items were only available to uh, companies that had a business relationship with Microsoft or with Apple. We've got some other uh, Apple stuff as well. And we've got some items that were only available to employees of some of these companies that we're going to be talking about. So let's just get started with it. So we'll start with these devices on the table right here. We'll start right over here on the left side with this device right here. This is the Motorola Sliver L7. Now I did a video on this and what I'm gonna do is in the description down below, I'm gonna have a link to all of the videos that I've done on these products because you can only put a certain amount of cards in a YouTube video and uh, I'm definitely going to reach that limit with linking all of these videos. So I'll just have down below in order of appearance all these items, the full video if you want more information. So this, is one of the iTunes phones. And this what makes this special is it has a Apple-designed iTunes player installed on it. This was a partnership between Apple, Motorola, and Singular, who was the exclusive carrier for this device. Motorola was the one who manufactured it. Apple didn't really have anything to do with the manufacturing. They just designed the Apple uh, iTunes client that was on this phone that could work with iTunes, and you could sync music to this. Uh, I did a, a full video on this. It's about the entire uh, iTunes phone history. It also goes into more detail about the original iTunes phone, which was the Motorola Rocker E1. And it talks about how this device ultimately failed because it was not, uh, it was just wasn't that popular. It didn't sell very well. And uh, yeah, very, very interesting story. So that is the iTunes phone. This does work. I just don't have the battery charged at the moment. Now this right here is something we've all seen before. This is an iPhone. Specifically, this is the first generation iPhone. So you might be saying, well, why do you have this here? This was widely available. It was really popular. A ton of people had this. Well, this phone itself, there, there's nothing special about this phone. This is your standard iPhone. This was actually purchased. I looked up the uh, serial number. This was actually purchased when the iPhone 3G was out and when they were still offering the iPhone well, what came to be known as the iPhone 2G, even though it was never officially called that. So this was not bought on launch day or anything like that. But what was acquired on launch day was this bag right here. This is really cool because this is the, the bag that you would be given if you purchased an iPhone. Uh, I know on, on launch day and probably a little while after that, when you would go into, these were at Apple and Singular stores, or well, they were eventually acquired by the new AT&T, so you could go to AT&T stores. When you purchased an iPhone, you would walk out with it in this bag right here. And I don't have anything, there's nothing in the bag. The bag itself, it's, it's actually kind of a box slash bag hybrid because you can see that it's made of this uh, cardboard-ish material, and then it's got these uh, handles right here that just, you can carry it around like a bag. And yeah, but unfortunately this is breaking. As you can see here, it is tearing on the side. Really unfortunate, but it's still pretty cool to have. Now this box here is a little bit interesting because this is not the original box that you would get an iPhone in. The iPhone 2G, or the iPhone first gen if you wanna be uh, proper here, came in a much larger box. It, it said iPhone on the side. It was it was much larger than this. Probably like three of these stacked on top of each other would equal the size of the iPhone 2G box. If you bought an iPhone 2G on launch day, you know what I'm talking about. This box, I believe, I'm not 100% certain, but I believe this is what a, um, like if you were to go to an Apple store, 
and get your iPhone replaced, I believe this is the box they would give you the new iPhone in. Because the only stuff in here is the iPhone itself would go in this tray, and then you've got your SIM ejector tool right here, which has actually never been opened. It's still sealed in it. We'll stay that way. Um, and this is for the original iPhone, because on the back here, you see the copyright date is 2007. Uh, so that's when this, this box likely was produced. And there's your part number right here. And this looks like an original iPhone. It looks like on the side that it kind of switches to the black um, antenna on the bottom of the iPhone. And then this right here, right behind there looks uh, shinier. So that's gonna be your metal, like right on, I mean, you can very faintly see it here, but if you notice right there, um, that's that little transition that I'm talking about. So this is something that an original iPhone would have been given to somebody in for maybe a refurbished model, uh, which is unlikely because this was again 2007, the iPhone was launched that year. And, uh, or my guess is, is this was used at a genius bar if you went in and your iPhone needed to get replaced for whatever reason, um, they would just give you a new iPhone in this box. So these right here are the two uh, rarer iPhone related items that I have. And this box especially is just really cool to have. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and set this, I'm gonna put this box in here just so we keep it together. We'll set this aside and we'll move on to this device right here. I did a video on this. This is an iPod. And you might be going, okay, what's so special about that? Well, what's special about this is what's on the back because this is an HP iPod. And yes, this was at a time when, you know, around the time that the iPod was first introduced. Uh, not to really explain the entire story here, but Apple partnered with HP to get the uh, to get iPods sold in a uh, larger amount of stores because HP had access to more retail channels than Apple did at that time. Uh, but the unique thing about these is these technically were not Apple products. They were sold by HP. In fact, Apple would not service these. If you brought this into a Genius Bar and they saw this HP logo, they would refer you to HP. You'd have to get this serviced at HP. And they had uh, a few partnerships, I believe, like with CompUSA. You could go in and, and get this device serviced there. So it's really interesting because even though this was built by Apple, this was... I mean, it's a standard iPod. There's nothing special about this aside from the HP logo on the back. That's the only thing that differs this from a standard iPod at this time that was sold by Apple. But because of that logo on the back and because it was technically sold by HP, this was not an Apple product and it would not be serviced by Apple. So I did a video on this if you want to check out the full story there. Also, what we've got here is the Microsoft Kin. Uh, this is a smartphone, a very short-lived smartphone that was created by Microsoft. It was only uh, offered for sale for 48 days until it was ultimately discontinued. And so, yeah, it was a, a total failure. Uh, and this is this is what it looks like right here. So yeah, pretty neat. Uh, I bought this off of eBay actually specifically to make that full retrospective video a little while ago. So now we're getting into some of the Windows XP related stuff. Now, these two items right here uh, were showcased in a single video on the Microsoft Windows XP Professional GoPro Collector's Kit. It's a very long name. But what it was, was a kit of, you had some XP memorabilia, some kind of nice little knickknacks, like this is a bobblehead here. You've got this Windows XP Professional Baseball that actually has the Bliss wallpaper design on it, which is really cool. And these were given to, or well not given to, if you were a Microsoft partner, any company that had like a business relationship with Microsoft, if you had a retail store that sold copies of Windows XP, for example, uh, you could purchase these. And this was a, a kit that came with some marketing material. It came with some things to educate your employees on how to sell Windows XP. And it also came with things like this kind of just for fun. The entire kit was themed around baseball. So you have this guy uh, dressed up in a Windows XP branded baseball uniform. His name is Eddie Reliable Trustman. And this right here is a, is a baseball, like I mentioned. You also got a set of baseball cards. There was a set of uh, Big League Chew bubblegum. Uh, which is which was thankfully not in the in the package that I bought because it probably would have been uh, way uh, like long expired and super disgusting. And you also got a a copy of Windows XP Professional for far less than what uh, it was sold for at retail value. So you could get a a copy of XP with all this other cool stuff, which was which was super cool. So uh, yeah. 
again, I'll have that full video if you want to go check it out. So next up, we've got this white box right here, this mysterious white box. Now, if you guys saw my floppy disk collection video, you know exactly what's in here. These are very special. These are floppy diskettes, but they're not any floppy diskettes because these are IBM employee use only floppy diskettes. So these would be used by IBM employees and they would be uh, they would store either confidential or internal IBM software that was not meant to be shared outside of the company. So here's here's one of them right here. And these were brand new when I when I got these, by the way, and I, I opened up one of these boxes uh, specifically for that video. I still have one of them sealed and it's probably going to stay that way for a long time. I believe this is a date code of sorts uh, up top here. So my guess is these were manufactured in, like on the 15th or the 13th of February, 1986. Uh, maybe maybe this was the 15th carton that was produced on February 13th, 86 or something like that. Uh, that's that's my guess with this date code up here. These have been sitting in a in this container for over 30 years. So you've got these two check boxes up here, IBM Confidential and IBM Internal. So what you would do is if you were an IBM employee and you made a copy of an IBM Confidential tool, you would write what it is here and then check this box. Now this I believe has some sort of marking here. I believe this says IBM 3270 Workstation Program. So these might have had software on them. This says right here, like for, for IBM use only. Uh, and the discs themselves are in obviously pretty good physical shape. They've been sitting in this box for 30 years. Uh, do they work? I'm not sure, but I don't have a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive to take a look at them though. I should probably get one of those because I, I, I know you guys might want to see if there's anything on these. Um, the reason why that I thought these were blank originally, and they, they, they very well could be blank, uh, because I do have a set of three and a half inch IBM use only diskettes. And these are essentially the same thing. They got a, a very similar label, IBM Confidential, IBM Internal for IBM use only, but they're just th three and a half inch diskettes, right? Uh, you should just ignore this this Harvard Graphics software. This was obviously Harvard Graphics was not a IBM confidential utility. This was someone's backup copy of it is is my guess. Uh, we've also got back here that that kind of ends off uh, this IBM stuff. This is actually the only IBM stuff that uh, that I've got to show you guys. Now back here we've got this is really unique this is a copy of windows xp starter edition and if you've never heard of this before windows xp starter edition was a special version of xp that uh it was a a low cost version it had some limitations and it was really designed for people who were just learning how to use computers you know really really novice users but this was only released in certain regions. This was never released here in the US. What's unique about these is you can tell from the artwork here on the packaging. For each country that Microsoft released this in, they customized the packaging for that specific country. So this, if you can't tell, was a version released in Russia because we've got a, a image of St. Basil's Cathedral on the front of the packaging here. So I did three videos on this actually. I purchased this from a guy in Russia and then I did the unboxing of it. I installed it on a laptop that I have, and then in the third video, we tried to activate it by calling the US Microsoft support line and uh, try to get this activated. So if you wanna go check out that trilogy of videos, uh, I'll, I'll have those linked down below as well. So obviously from the packaging, this would not make sense to release anywhere outside of Russia, so it was only released in Russia. And there was also a, a generic version of XP Starter that didn't have any of this. Uh, and that was available as well, but I believe in these countries, this was the only version that you could get, which was really cool. The packaging is not as, I mean, there's not really as, as much packaging. This is basically a, a standard like DVD style case uh, with this insert. I mean, this is not sticked on to the packaging. This is actually, if I open this up here, I'm doing it this way because this disc is just loose in here. Uh, we'll set that aside here. Um, this is just the insert over it, which has the product key on the back. And then this, you can tell it's it's in Russian. This is the license agreement, I believe. So um, yeah, pretty awesome. And then you have, this is the installation disc itself. And then this right here that I took out, this is a disc that has some tutorials and stuff uh, on it, some like videos on, on how to use Windows, which is, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and, and set this back in here. So yes, very, very unique, very awesome. This is something I, I, I've never seen in person before until that I purchased this. 
Uh, and yeah, we made a couple of fun videos about it. So that is my Russian copy of XP. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys want to know the story behind this right here. So, this is a Windows XP Professional Lava Lamp. This is a lava lamp. Uh, I can take this off here. Um, I can kind of uh, move this around and you can see that inside of here it has these XP things that float around in here. And this does have a, a lamp down here at the bottom that when you turn on it just lights up. And yeah, I, I've had this, I've never really talked about how I got it, but or well, or what it is, how it even came to exist, uh, but I have had this in the background of a couple of my videos. So this was, I believe this was released on XP, I, I think it was launch day or, or something to uh, developers or attendees of the launch event, something like that, because this was never sold. I got this as a gift, actually. This was given to me. You can find this on, on eBay, actually. But yeah, so that's really all I have to say about that. It's just kind of become a, a desk piece as well. Uh, so we'll just set that back there for now. So that is all of this stuff that you guys saw on camera. I do have some stuff off camera that I want to show you guys as well. And we'll just move all this stuff off to the side here. And I'll slowly bring in some of this other stuff. So we'll start with these right here. Now these, I guess they aren't really super rare, uh, but you cannot get these anymore. What these are, are physical copies of Ubuntu, Kubuntu, and Ubuntu Server. So years ago, this uh, program was discontinued, I believe in 2011 or uh, 2012. Canonical, who is the developer of Ubuntu Linux, had this program called Shipit, where you could apply for physical copies of either Ubuntu, Kubuntu, or Ubuntu server, and they would mail them to you for free. And they were shipped from the Netherlands, actually, and I have the packaging somewhere. I believe it's in storage right now because I just kept it because I just thought it was really cool. Yeah, so they would mail these to you for free. Obviously, that was not really sustainable uh, financially, so they ended up uh, discontinuing this program, like I said, in 2011 or 2012. Obviously, this is free software. You can download Ubuntu com you know, completely free and make your own disks, but it's just really cool to have a physical, like, official copy that was, you know, this was branded like this would have been sold in a store. Uh, I, I just think it's, it's really awesome. And the disk itself is also branded here. You can see it says... Ubuntu, it says this is the Ubuntu 10.04 LTS desktop edition, and it says legally free to copy, modify, and redistribute. Because you could do that with these. I mean, this is free software, so you're you're totally able to make copies of these, give them out to your friends, to your coworkers, whatever. But I just think that these are super cool because Canonical could have just taken a standard CD and just slapped like a you know, white label on it, like a like a label from a label maker that said Ubuntu version 10.04, just mailed that to you, but they took the time to actually develop packaging with a really wonderful design and put all this information in here and custom design the disc. I just think it's really awesome and you can't get these anymore from them. And I believe this was the last version. It was either this or version 10.10 .10 was the last version that you could get for free from them uh, in this way where they would physically mail you a copy. Next up, we're going to get into a bit of Apple stuff. And this first item we're going to take a look at was never sold to the general public. I don't think this was sold at all. This is the Apple Media Toolkit for Higher Education, second edition. And this contains back to school promotion materials for the year 1992. So what this is, is this would be given out to Apple um, authorized service providers and companies who would sell Apple computers because this was before Apple had their own retail stores. So this would come with promotion materials that you could print off yourself to hang up in your store. And if I take out this little pamphlet here that's behind here, we can take a look at uh, what some of those promotion materials are. So it tells you how to print. It also includes the, the typefaces that were used in these uh, promotion materials. So here's some images of them right here. So this one says, where's the best place to buy a Macintosh? And then it tells you that you can put your own store information here. So it tells you use this customization area for your location, map, address, phone number, store hours, etc. You can put your return address, you can put your mailing address. 
And yeah, so some of these were like things you could, I guess, mail to customers or like have in your store. So this is a Macintosh PowerBook ad. This is a Macintosh Classic 2 ad. And yeah, so instead of mailing you the like full size ads themselves, they would just give this to you and uh, you would use it to print out these ads on your printer that would be in your store. So I just think this is really cool. I actually acquired this in a huge lot of Apple software that was, it was sold on eBay and I did an unboxing video of it though I just never published it for whatever reason. But yeah, this was probably back when I had like under a hundred subscribers. That's how long ago this was. So we'll go ahead and, and put this back in here. Uh, so it's obviously, you know, it's got some information about what is contained on this disc on in that little pamphlet it's got system requirements it tells you what you need you need to have um at least two megs of memory hypercard uh, 2.1 or later uh page maker 4.2 uh, which actually comes on this disc. You can see it says it'll be installed via the installer included with Apple Media Toolkit. Uh, System 6.05 and uh, Macintosh CD Setup version 3.1. And it also has the typefaces, which says if you don't have them, they are on this disc as well. So this is what the disc looks like. And it tells you again, uh, some of the stuff that is contained on this disc, which yeah, pretty awesome. I've never seen this. Um, until I actually acquired it myself. So next up, we've got something that was made available to the general public. I mean, what's contained in this thing isn't really special. It's just a standard DVD. But what's special about it is this is a Apple branded DVD. So this was, you know, branded by Apple. You've got your uh, do things not to do back here. It tells you um, how to use a DVD. Uh, yeah, this was sold probably in an Apple store. This was probably around the time when Apple, uh, yeah, had their own retail stores and they would sell their own branded DVDs. Uh, so yep, DVD-R, 4.7 gigabyte media, certified for use with Apple DVD-R drive. So they like have this thing like, oh, this was certified. Like, I mean, it's just a standard DVD. There's nothing special about it, but they just say that because yeah, it's an Apple product. So um, pretty cool. So we'll set that aside here. Next up we have, we're going to get back into some Microsoft stuff. Actually, all of these, uh, I've got four more things to show you. They're all Microsoft related things. The first here is a copy of Windows 95. Now, I did a video on the Windows 98 version of this that I have. This is a copy of Windows 95 that was solely intended for use at Indiana University. I got this in that same lot that I got this Apple Media Toolkit thing in. And I've also got a copy of Windows 98 and Microsoft Office for Mac. Next up, we have something that isn't really rare per se, because it's not like anything that, I mean, you could get this if you were a consumer, but you had to have purchased a Windows Vista capable machine. And this was very unique because I Windows Vista, when Windows Vista came out, is the only time that I can remember where computer manufacturers still had the previous version of Windows, in this case XP, pre-installed on computers that they would sell. Even though Vista was the latest version of Windows. I mean, that would be like Windows 10 being out now and computer manufacturers still selling computers with Windows 8 on them. But they did that because Vista obviously wasn't very popular when it came out. So Microsoft came up with this program called Vista Capable. And what it was is you would buy a computer that came with XP but it had this special sticker on it that said designed for XP, Windows Vista capable. And what you could do is apply for a free copy of Windows Vista and then it would be mailed to you and it looked exactly like this. This is an express upgrade to Windows Vista. This is Windows Vista Home Premium specifically. So you've got this, this disc right here. This was uh, made for gateway and e-machines computers. And uh, then you've got this this driver and applications upgrade CD as well. So if you wanted a copy of Vista uh, and you bought one of those computers that was Vista capable, you could get a free upgrade copy. So yeah, this is just, uh, it's not, and again, something, I mean, anyone could get this if they bought a Windows Vista capable machine, but I've just not really seen a whole lot of these. And uh, this was actually, my dad got this with a gateway laptop that he got that actually came with Windows XP Media Center Edition, but it came with a upgrade to Vista Home Premium, but he just kept it on XP Media Center Edition. Next up, we have a piece of beta software, actually a collection of beta software. 
I did a video on this as well. This is the Microsoft Office System Beta 2 Kit 2003. So this was a yeah a beta copy of Office 2003. I believe this was uh, offered to businesses. I, I don't know if this was given free or if you had to pay for it. My guess is it was given for free because this is beta software. Um, but this is a, a whole toolkit that contained beta software and, and also it kind of tried to sell Microsoft Office 2003 to you. There's a lot of stuff in here. You can see we've got three disks right here. The demo CD, evaluation CD, and developer resource CD. And then, uh, this is not a part of this, we'll just set this aside for now, we'll touch on this in a moment. And then you've got this whole thing of even more software, and I'm going to open this off camera because there are product keys in here. Uh, this is even more, uh, look at all this, look at all these disks, I mean you've got uh, OneNote, Exchange Server, Outlook, Microsoft, SharePoint, SharePoint Services, Server 2003, Publisher, Front Page, InfoPath, the main Office CD, and then uh, two uh, beta two uh, language packs, you can see up there at the very top. So yeah, lots of software. Maybe this was offered for sale because this is a lot of software for them to give away for free, but it's all beta software. I mean, this is all like evaluation stuff. So it's not like this had any, like it's, it's not like they were giving you a, a, a free copy of Microsoft Office because this was only valid for a certain period of time. This right here, uh, I bought, I actually got these two things at a thrift store. This is the Microsoft Security Resource uh, Kit. I just have this in here just to kind of keep it together, but this was not offered with this. This was a completely separate thing. And this contains security-related stuff. So this is the Security Resource CD. And it's also got, uh, again, trial slash evaluation copies of Windows and uh, Microsoft, I think it was Microsoft, uh, yeah, Systems Management Server, Microsoft Internet Security and Acceleration Server. Then you've got XP Pro and Windows 2000 advanced server right here. Um, so these are like evaluation copies of all of uh, that. So this just is kind of a way for you to test out these uh, products without buying them. And yeah, so this might have been offered for free as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's what it is, the Microsoft Security Resource Kit. So I just keep this in here just to keep it together with the uh, with the Office Kit. So we'll, <laughs> we'll set this back in here without everything falling out. So it folds up like that. And there you go, very large um, kit of beta software. So we'll set this over here. Now last but not least, we have something that I'm really interested in because I haven't even opened it. I got this recently, and this, uh, from what I remember, is a Windows XP. This was something that was given to Microsoft employees who worked on Windows XP. So we'll go ahead and slice it open here. So here it is. This is Windows XP related, as you might be able to tell. It's this really nice like metal booklet here with the XP logo. This was given to developers, I believe, who worked on Windows XP. So you see it's got this little uh, thing here. Over the years, Microsoft has created a number of products that have revolutionized the way people use computers. Windows XP is the latest and greatest. It will transform not only our industry, but the nature of computing itself. Your great ideas and hard work will change the world in ways we can only begin to imagine. The words thank you hardly seem adequate. So you see you've got like, oh, and it's actually the, the colors of the Windows logo, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, so this has not been used. And it's not going to get used because I'm just going to keep this as a, you know, something to store on a shelf. But it's a notebook. But what's special about it is, again, this little note here and just what is on the outside. Again, this is metal. You know, you can hear that. And yeah, it's got the, the, the XP logo. So super cool. When I found this, I was like, oh, I just, I just got to buy this for the channel. So I think that stuff like this that was made for employees that worked on Windows or in, in the same thing like for Apple employees and for the IBM employees with these diskettes here. I think that stuff is just really cool because it's so unique. It's stuff that the, you know, we would never see. And I think it's just awesome for the, because this the guy that I bought this from most likely used to work at, at Microsoft. He could have even worked on Windows XP. And uh, yeah, he just sold this. And I just think it's awesome that we have people that, you know, do that because this is definitely going to, I mean, I'm not going to use this. This is going to just be preserved. It's going to be on a shelf. And then maybe I'll give it, you know, sell it to somebody else or donate it to a museum at some point if there's ever a 
Windows XP or my, like Microsoft Software History Museum. Maybe I'll start one of those or something. I mean, you guys see we do like a lot of window, like vintage Windows stuff on this channel. Um, and oh yeah, on the back here, uh, these are this is the brand Steel Threads for Leeds Made in China. So I guess that's the the brand that uh, actually created this. Um, but yeah, really, really awesome stuff. So yeah, guys, there you go. That is my obscure and kind of rare technology collection. A lot of this stuff was is not, I mean, it's not really technology by itself. I mean, this is a notepad. This is a bobblehead. This is a lava lamp. This is not, these are not computer related things on their own, but it's the branding on them that makes them very unique. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week here on this channel. Uh, guys, if you want to see a dedicated video on any of these items here that I have not covered yet, be sure to let me know. Again, I'll have a, a list of all the videos that I have on all of these products down below if you want to go check those out. But for now, that's going to do it for me. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.